الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم على آله وصحبه ومن والاه سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا فعلمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا ما علمتنا وزدنا علما وجعل ما علمتناه حجة لنا لا علينا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله uh, Today's uh, first class after having last week's uh, introduction and before we start we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, have mercy on our brothers and sisters who passed away yesterday in New Zealand and uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who are injured to uh, have a speed recovery and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant to this ummah strength there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make Muslims together uh, towards the, the enemies of Islam and Muslims. Uh, today, inshallah, we will talk about the uh, some terms that uh, it may it will face student of Sharia most of the time. And uh, we know the Islamic terms divided into two. So there is, when we speak about uh, Sharia terms, it has two sides. The first side is the Arabic language, meaning how the Arabs used to uh, understand the term, right? And the second concept is Sharia concepts. And Sharia divided into two. I mean the definition of the word in Sharia divided into two. Is general and the second one according to the, to the subject we are learning. According to what? To the subjects. For example, uh, if we say uh, aqida, for example. Aqida, uh, in Arabic language, from the root word aqada, to tie something, right? Uh, aqid, for example, the rope means al-habl, uh, tie the, the rope, right? But in according to scholars of aqida, it's different. We are coming to discuss this, inshallah, meaning your aqida, your faith, towards uh, Quran and the Sunnah of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Same also when we talk about the other terms. So meaning the terms for student is very important. Right? If we say Hadith. Hadith, when we talk Hadith in Arabic language, it means something new, right? Say, that's an example, هذا الهاتف حديث, this phone is new. But the hadith, in language, it seems also to speak. تحدثت إلى فلان, I spoke to someone. But the hadith, according to scholars of hadith, is different. It's the statement of the Nabi Sallallahu or the action of the Prophet Sallallahu or what he has observed. That is the definition of hadith. So that's why these terms uh, will face a lot students when they attend the classes or when they read books. It's very important to, to understand them. Today, inshallah, we will have the concept of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, many verses, he mentioned the word Islam, Muslimin, uh, Aslim, Muslimun, huh? so what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mean by that? He says, huwa sammakumul muslimin, means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who named you Muslims. It's very important uh, statement. So behind that we will ask many questions. Since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named us Muslims, can we give all these names nowadays 
that you know this group named this, this group named that, that group named this and that. Can we do that or not? What do you think? It's very important. I think, can someone name some groups? Please, let's share. The group that you know. We have uh, Islam, yes, we are Muslims, right? Other names? Some people call themselves Hanafi, you mean? Uh, this is uh, Madhab. Okay. This is Madhab. In Fiqh, we learn this is school of Fiqh. We have four famous school, schools of Fiqh. Abu Hanifa Madhab, Malik Madhab, Shafi'i, Ahmed. But other groups, we have... Some people call Sufis? Some, yeah, good. Some they call Sufis. Some they call what? Any name? Salafi is name, other Wahhabi is name, other name, please. Sorry, this is groups. Tariqat can be everyone give a different name. Shias, for example, any other group you know, yes, any, please mention name. Sorry, Sunnis, Ibadi, more. Sorry? <laughs> so it means we have a lot. Ikhwanis, Brotherhood, or Tablighis, those for Dawah, or Salafis are many also. We have, it means, many names. And uh, everyone, every group claimed that he's followed the, the right path. Everyone is saying that my way is the correct way. That's what we know, right? So in Islam, can we give these names? I name myself this. A tabligh, or I name myself Salafis, or I name myself uh, Brotherhood, or I name myself this and that. Can we do this or not? We cannot. Why we cannot? Great uh, differentiation between us. Mm. So we will split, you know, the more names we have and the different ideas. It will give exclusivity. Mm. But if they say it's just name, can we do that or not? We cannot. Please. Does we will. Mean, sorry? Does that mean that we're not one ummah? One ummah. So it means if you give names, you are spreading the, uh, the ummah, right? Uh, when we talk about this in Sharia, this name divided into two. Divided into two. There is name Sharia names, right? Sharia means it were mentioned in the Quran or Sunnah of the Prophet, right? And there are other names where it's not in the Quran and the Sunnah. For example, we know Muhajirin and we know Ansar. Right? Who are the Muhajirin? Those who immigrated from Mecca to Al Medina. Right? We call them Muhajirin. Immigrations. And we have Ansar. The people of Medina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Muhajirin and Ansar in the Quran. Hmm? Since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned these names, it means it is Sharia name. Where uh, is a, a name that uh, the Sharia made it permissible. But the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the two Muhajir and Sar had arguments, so the Muhajir called his Muhajirin, his groups, and the Ansari called his groups Ansar, people of Medina. What the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said? Abi da'wa al-jahiliyati wa ana bayna adhurikum. You are using 
the, the manners of Jahiliyyah, Jahiliyyah before Islam, and I'm still alive. So what we understand from this statement, it means even this name confirmed by the Sharia, by the Quran, but when that make ta'asub, fanaticism, uh, make uh, arguments dividing the Ummah, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reject that. So we say these names is acceptable as long as it doesn't what? Separate the Ummah. If that cause Ummah to, uh, to be separated and to uh, destroy the Ummah, then it is not permissible to give these names. And I believe all these names nowadays destroy the Ummah. I believe that. Every group is, is uh, trying his best research to prove that he is the only Ummah saved from hell and the rest uh, from hell and all the rest are what? And hell, a'udhu billah. So we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named us Muslimin. Huwa sammakum al Muslimin. It's a beautiful name. And named by Allah. That's why the best name to be given to Muslims is Muslims. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named Abuna Ibrahim, our father Ibrahim alayhi salam. He described him in Quran. Uh, the Milla, the way of our father Ibrahim alayhi salam, Hanifa, meaning it's not worse to Mushrikeens and Muslima. But the others they will say, uh, we wanted, if you say Muslims, everyone will be inside. The Shia will be inside, the Ibadi will be inside, the Khawarij will be inside, everyone claim Muslim. That's why we say we are Salafis, so we understand Quran, Sunnah of the Nabi Sallallahu according to the Sahaba. It's a beautiful concept, understanding, and this is the right way. But we tell them, now under Salafi there are more than 10 groups, everyone say, I'm Salafi. More than 10. Salafi, you know. In uh, jihadis, Salafis, uh, many names. I can name you more than 10. So since the answer is not anymore exist, we go back to original. Huwa sammakumu al-Muslimin. Allah named you what? Muslims. So the best name we should carry is Islam. Is what? Islam. But we still tell the rest, those who name themselves, we don't have a problem with you if it matches the concept of Islam. But we believe, uh, my humble opinion, all this name nowadays is not, uh, there is no a right objective behind naming yourself this group, that group, that group. It just will what? Destroy the, the Ummah. Maybe some of them will say and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith that the Jew will be divided into 71 group, right? Groups. And the Christians will be divided into how many? 72. And the Muslims will be divided into how many? 73, right? All of them in hell except one. When he was asked about this group, he said, the one who follow me and my companions. What do you think about this hadith? Have you heard about this hadith? Hmm? What do you think? This hadith is reported by Tirmidhi. The authentic 
is until 73. Meaning, Nabi Sallallahu confirmed that the Ummah will be divided, 73, 72, 71. But, the additional one, where all in hell except one, is not authentic. It's not what? Authentic. Yahya ibn Ma'in, Ali ibn Madini, Imam Bukhari, all those said the, 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 the additional one is not, is not sahiha. However, some scholars, they say it is uh, authentic. What is the... So we said, this hadith is uh, the authentic, the hadith is up to 73. The rest of hadith or additional hadith is what? It's not sahih. It's not authentic. Any question about this? Need to be moved all the time, I say. I thought it had a وحده غلق Sorry, the question is? When they say the Muslim was split into 73 groups Yes And I said one from the 73 Is safe That is the hadith that most of the time used to, to prove that there is only one, one group is correct. But we tell them the hadith is authentic up to 73. It's to prove the Ummah, Jazakallah, will be divided into 73. But the rest of the hadith, there are khilaf among scholars of hadith. However, majority of scholars of hadith said it is not, it is not authentic. What we need to know here is since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named us Muslims, we have to be happy uh, with uh, this name. Right? Uh, let's see the, the meaning of the word Islam in a linguistic. It means peace when you say to somebody, Assalamu alaikum, is from the a root word of Islam, Salam, Salamu Alaikum, it means peace upon you. And it means also submission. It means to, to be humble with Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described Muslims among each other, Adillatin ala al-mu'mineen, a'izzatin ala al-kafirin. Meaning Muslims among each other have to be very humble. Huh? It means also to obey the commands of Allah. The moment you are Muslims, you say the shahada, you have to accept whatever comes from Allah and the Nabi Wasallam. And here is very important point. When it comes from, whatever comes from Sharia, Quran and Sunnah, is either comments to do or comments to abstain from. Right? Right or not? Right. So the commands that you have to do, it has to be done according to your capacity. According to what? Because Allah knows everyone's capacity. And he said, Allah, in few verses in the Quran, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Means, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to your capacity. 
And he said also, لا يكلف الله لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Meaning Allah will not charge anyone beyond his capacity. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited something, or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prohibited something, we have to abstain. Because there is no, I mean, if you abstain, you just stop from doing something, right? And that is why the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, مَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِهِ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ Whatever I ask you to do, do it uh, according to your capacity. And وَمَا نَهِيتُكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ And whenever, whatever I ask you to abstain from, then you should abstain from it. So meaning, when you receive a verse from Quran and the Sunnah, you don't have a choice to reject you have a choice to, to do your best. To do what? Your best. But you cannot reject. Allah says in Surah Al-Ahzab, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَارَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ Meaning when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides something, no man and women can have a choice. You can't have a choice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to, to pray five prayers. Then you cannot say, oh, I do only two or three. You have to do five. Right? Then capacity came when you are traveling. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shortened the salah from four to two. You can combine. Right? Allah will not charge, never charge his servants beyond their capacity. If you cannot stand, you have permission to sit and you pray. If you cannot sit, you can lie down and pray. Right? These are the permissions were given by the Sharia. So we say Islam, it means also to obey the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the uh, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And to believe whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger said is, uh, is a comment for you and for the ummah. Hmm? So meaning you cannot say I am Muslim and you lie. Can or cannot? If someone lie, is he still Muslim or not? He's not Muslim? No, no. This is a aqidah of khawari. If a Muslim drink al-kuhul, can or cannot? Can or can't? Cannot. So if a Muslim does that, what, what we call him? Muslim. What we call him? Muslim. Sin. Muslim who did sin. Yes. It's very important terms. So here we distinguish between two things. If a Muslim who say the Shahada, the Arkan Islam, Imam, but he commits Masiyah, Ma'asi, sins, right? There are two questions. If he does it because he's weak, Right? Somebody, he, he accepts, for example, corruption. We know corruption is a major sin. Right? A major sin. We tell him why you do that. He will have one of the answer. Either he will say, corruption is halal. Right? Or he will say, uh, you know, I have some difficulties and, you know, I'm... I want to support my family, support myself, and this, and they know it's haram. Just I'm um, a weak Muslim, right? So the first one, we tell him about the evidences from Quran, from Hadith that is prohibited. So if he say it is halal, 
he is no Muslim. He is no more Muslim. Because he has rejected something confirmed by Quran and Sunnah. Right? But if he say, no, I believe this stealing, drinking, all this is haram. No question mark. But um, inshallah, I'm planning to stop. You know, I just can't stop. We say this one is a major sin. Is what? Is a major. So a person is still a Muslim, but he's a weak Muslim. We say what? He's a? A weak Muslim. Because we believe Islam is levels, degrees. Right? But the name of Islam is there. We can never take off the name from Muslims until there is a, a condition. We will come and discuss that, inshallah. <coughs> so it means, in general, Islam is a, to believe. Uh, that whatever comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama the agreement of scholars that is right and have to be followed by the Muslims and when we receive the ahkam from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama we have no choice to reject uh, we have to what? accept according to the conditions and rulings the term Tawheed, we hear a lot of this term. What do you think? What do you think of the meaning of Tawheed is? Yeah, without looking. Try the term you have it in your head. What do you think about Tawheed? A Tawheed from Wahada. Yuwahidu Tawheed means to, uh, is to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to say to believe that this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the, the only one we should not uh, worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anyone as he said subhanahu wa ta'ala all Muslims say that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is one and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created jinn and ins for what reason? Which is? Ibadah, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here question. Can you tell me why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose only jinn and ins? We have animals. We have angels. Right? We have other creations. Right? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named only two? What do you think? Can you guess? Among Allah's creations, Allah chose two. I have created you to worship me. Why he didn't say these two? His angels. They are creations of Allah, right? Animals. We can choose. That's a very good answer. So meaning the the gene and ins were given the, the choice. But for angels, the animals, they have no choice. They have to be they have to worship Allah. Allah says in a, a Quran about angels, La Yasun Allah Ma Amarahum wa Yafaluna Ma Yumaru. Meaning the angels they do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. Wa yafaluna ma yumarun and they do whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands them. Right? And he says about other creations, wa immin shayin illa yusabbihu bihamdi. وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحًا All creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do tasbih, they do worship, they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but as a human being, we do not understand the ways of what? Of ibadah. But when it comes to jinn and ins, they have what? The choice. Allah says in the Quran, 
إنا هديناه السبيلة إما شاكرا وإما كفورا We have what given to human being to creation for Allah a سبيلة path To be thankful is to go to the right path to worship Allah, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And the left path والعياذ بالله is the path of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And Allah says in the Quran also إنا هديناه النجدين The ins and jinn were given a najdain, the two ways. So that's why we understand here the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And ibadah here means يُوَحِّدُونَ To have tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, please, please. The shaitan is a, a part we say for, from the the jinn. So when the, the the shaitan was among the angels, right? The moment he disobey Allah subhanahu wa taala, Allah subhanahu wa taala take him out from the 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 al jannah and from the al uh, al malaika. But he was one of the malaika, right? Allah says in the Quran. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِسِ When we ask the angels to do sujood for Adam, all of them they did accept Iblis. What the ayah indicates, it means Iblis were from Malaika. Because saying Malaika, all they did accept Iblis. The moment he disobeyed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him off from the angels. Uh, the Aqeedah uh, So we will come to this one by one to explain them inshallah in a, a detail uh, Also another term The third term is term of Aqeedah we hear a lot this word. What do you think about this word, this term? What do you think? Hmm? Aqeedah comes from the aqada. From what? Aqada. The root word is aqada, which means uh, to tie, to confirm. Uh, to tie something, that's why in Arabic we say عقد الحبل uh, To tie the, the rope This one in a uh, language say, That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran لا يؤاخذكم الله باللغو في أيمانكم ولكن يؤاخذكم بما عقدتم الأيمان Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not charge us when we Swear without confirming by our hearts. Just sometimes you say to your friend, uh, Wallahi come to drink with me. Wallahi come to have coffee. Right? If your friend doesn't come, do you have to fast three days to pay, you know, for ten people? Huh? As is a hukum for al uh, yameen uh, Because you have a yameen right? Divided into three categories when you swear about something. You say, Wallahi, uh, if my son passed, I will invite you for dinner. If your son passed in his exam and you do not invite that person, what is the kafara for this? What you should do? So you have to either feed 10 people or to buy clothes for 10 people. If you can't offer, then you have to fast three days. This is the hukum, right? If someone have this swear or the oath without confirm, confirming it by the heart. We call it law. Allah named what? Law. لا يؤاخذكم الله باللغو. Means this one is a part of ill speech. 
it's not confirmed by the heart. So the moment you confirm by heart, we call what? Aqada. You have tied the oath uh, upon uh, something. Aqida, according to scholars, it refers to the matters which are known from the Quran and the uh, Sunnah of uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Meaning, you have to believe uh, and to tie upon the, the matters were mentioned by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the Quran and the hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wa sallam. Allah says that Amana Rasulu Bima Unzila Ilayhim al Rabbihi Wal Mu'minun Kulun Amana Billahi Wa Mala Ikatihi Wa Kutubihi Wa Rusulihi Lanu Ferriku Baina Ahadimin. This our Aqida upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards the messengers are the whole Messengers plus the messenger and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and our aqeedah towards the angels, our aqeedah towards the, the, the books were revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our aqeedah and faith towards the uh, kutub, al rusul, the angels and also the day of judgment, yawm al akhir and al qadr khayrihi wa sharri. So we will come to discuss them, inshallah, one by one. How we should believe our aqeedah towards Allah and the times, types of believing. And also our aqeedah towards the messengers. How we should believe. Huh? And also the books, the angels, Yawm al-Akhir and the Qadr, Khayrihi wa Sharri. What is the importance of aqeedah? What do you think? What is the fruits behind learning Aqidah? We discussed last class that any knowledge that do not make you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what? Is a love. Don't have to learn that. Right? We are learning to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Can you please share with me why we learn Aqidah? How do we learn Aqidah? What is the resource of Aqidah? Whether it's important to learn Aqidah or not? All this question is like uh, our recent uh, issues. People asking these questions a lot. What do you think? Hmm? Stay of your belief, which means your you must have aqidah in order to be a Muslim, yeah. right? Any other principles, that you by. principles must be there, like a pillar, yes. like there should be no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. So to learn aqidah, to not have any doubt. Good. Okay, when you, when you have all these things, what is the important, what we are going to get? Belief. So when you get belief, what? Faith. Hmm? Faith. Faith. Yes, now I have faith, right? I believe in uh, Aqidah. So what I'm going to get? The reward of that? Jannah. Al-Jannah. Good. Right? So let's discuss some of the points. Uh, firstly, is, the, is the, the job of the all messengers. You know, we have in uh, Islam, Aqidah, Ibadah, and Mu'amalat. Aqidah, faith, and Ibadat, Tahara, Salah, Saum, Zakah, uh, Hajj. This one we call what? Ibadat, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have mu'amalat between the two, like marriage, judge, akhlaq, uh, uh, all this we call it what? Business, we call it under mu'amalat. Aqeedah, all messengers were sent with one aqeedah. 
So, most of the matters of Aqidah were revealed the uh, same to all messengers. But for Ibadah, for, uh, for uh, Mu'amalat or Ibadat are different. It depends on the, the people, the capacity of people, and uh, the time. Uh, all this will change according to the time to the, and to the, to, the, to the capacity of what? People. That's why we know Hadith Isra and Mi'raj when Nabi Sallallahu in Isra and Mi'raj, the Salah was at the first time 50 times. When Nabi Sallallahu met Musa Alayhi Salam, he said, go back to Allah to decrease because your people can't. They are weak. We are weak. Right? So he decreased it until five. So, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولَ أَنِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَانِبُ الطَّرُوتِ Means, indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to every ummah, nation, a messenger, for what? أَنِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the second, وَاجْتَانِبُ الطَّرُوتِ To not worship anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he spent 13 years in Mecca calling only for aqidah. One, three years only for aqidah. He didn't touch the ahkam of uh, sawm, zakah, mu'amalat. He focused sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about what? Aqidah, tawheed. We go back to the term Islam. It's one of the objectives of Sharia is to make Islam Muslims one, one Ummah, unity. Not this group, that group, that group, many groups, right? So, uh, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he got some power, the disbelievers came to the Prophet Abu Lahab. Uh, they say, Oh Muhammad, what do you want from us? What he said? He said, one word only. They say, we give you ten words. So he say, he say, La ilaha illallah. What they answer? Aja'ala al-alihata ilaha wahida inna hadha la shay'un ujab. Oh, this Muhammad want to make aliha Allah as one to be worshipped. This is something strange. So all the messengers, if we go back to from Nuh until the Nabi Sallallahu all statement is about worshipping Allah alone. And to not worship anyone uh, besides Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. The question here, if someone did not receive a message from Allah can he can be uh, punished or not what do you think yes it's not right because Allah says here وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ Right? We have sent to every Ummah Rasul. And he said, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا We will not punish anyone if, we, if he did not receive a message. Or in another way, حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ We will not punish until we send to them a messenger. So those who did not receive a message, who did not receive a messenger, according to the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will not be punished. And show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adil, just, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next point. Aqeedah, to have aqeedah is to get uh, peace to get power 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he promised. Wa'ad Allahu ladhina amanu. Allah has a promise those who have faith, who have iman, who have right aqeedah. Tawheed to what? La yastakhlifannahum fil ard to give them strength in his uh, earth. Wa la yumakkinanna lahum deenahum alladhi artada lahum. Wa la yubaddilannahum min ba'di khawfihim amna. Meaning, always we have to ask ourselves what's happening now is a part of it is our mistakes because we are far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We still believe that somebody can harm you. We still believe in the power of people. We still can, some people they worship or they invoke those who have died already and invoke people. These all are what? Something wrong with their aqeedah, something wrong with their faith. So here Allah mentioned He will not help, He will not give strength, He will not give power to those who have no aqeedah. Because He promised Alladina Amanu. Amanu means having faith, having aqeedah. Right? Wa amilu saliha, then they apply what they believe. To get also forgiveness. Here is very important point, very important. The sins can be major sins, minor sins, and can be what? Shirk, right? We have a different type, which is shirk, right? We have major, minor, and we have shirk. Major need tawbah, need to regret, need to promise Allah to not do it again. Huh? And Mainer will be forgiven by salawat, by uh, things that we do every day, going to masjid, reading Quran, attending these classes, will be what? Removed. So meaning a person when he commits ma'asi sins, after he died, we can do nafila for him. We can go for umrah, right? Hajj, if he didn't do Hajj, we can go and do Hajj uh, in his name. We can give continue, continuously charity. We put Mus'haf on his name, right, at Masjid. We do many things, continuously charity. We do dua for him in our sujood, right? But if he died in state of shirk, you cannot help him. You cannot help him at all. That's why Allah says here, in Allah La yaghfiru. Allah will not forgive to a mushrik, to the one who worships besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala someone. Then, wa yaghfiru ma duna dalik. Anything less than shirk, Allah will forgive it. Less than shirk means ma'as. Any ma'asiyah. Any ma'asiyah. If he forgets about Allah, is he forgiven? Forget? Yeah. Like what? If he has no faith, he's not Muslim. But uh, is the having to know no parts about God, is it shirk or is it counted as shirk? Uh, you are talking about Muslim or no Muslim? Muslim. Muslim. So Muslim, he says shahada, arkan Islam, right? But he may not pray. He maybe didn't give charity. Maybe he didn't fast. So he's still Muslim, right? So it means he believes in Allah. They believe in Nabi Sallallahu believe in all messengers, believing in his books, in his angels, right? Yawm al-Akhir, right? But maybe he didn't pray. Sometimes he prays, sometimes not. He didn't give charity. He didn't fast, right? That's what you mean? No, let's say like he became an atheist. He's no Muslim. He's, he's a real murtad. Yes. Uh, if someone leave Islam, he's what? He's murtad. Of course. He will be questioned by Allah. We have to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is adil, just. He will not punish anyone without sending to him evidences. This we have to know. Right?
Very good question. So here we will come to that terms aqidah and tawheed. So some scholars, they call both aqidah and tawheed, same meaning. And some they distinguish. They say tawheed is for Allah. Tawheed, Allah, his names, his uh, uh, sifat, characteristics, uh, 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 subhanahu wa ta'ala. And tawheed of ibadah, of worship. So these three types of tawheed. And the aqidah is, uh, it refers to Aqidah of uh, faith, Allah, messenger, books, angels, uh, when we mention both of them. But the sister here means, Aqidah here, she means the, the uh, committing sins. We call them committing sins. Someone believe in Allah, Malaika, everything. The, the pillars of Islam and the pillars of Iman are there. But he commits sins. He will be punished, Yom Al-Qiyam. But he will not be forever there. He will not be forever in hell. Right? Because he is still a Muslim. And we have hadith shafa'a we will mention after this insha'Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell to the angels and messenger, take out from the hell all those who say la ilaha illallah even without doing any good deeds in dunya means what will save them the aqidah will save them means he used to have aqidah he believed but he didn't do zakat he didn't fast he didn't go to hajj and that's why if you know uncle is uh, abu talib is the uncle of the prophet size and he was helping him a lot. He protected him from the enemies of Quraysh, right? And he supported him a lot, right? Just before he passed away, what the Nabi Sallallahu said to him? What he said? Oh, oh my uncle, say la ilaha illallah. Oh my uncle, say one word. I will have shafa'a for you. Just one word. And Abu Lahab was there. He said, died instead of your father, your parents, means non-Islam. Then at the end, he died instead of shirk. What the Nabi Sallallahu said after this, he said, I will keep invoking Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for you and pray for you unless Allah stop me. So Allah revealed the verse in Surah Tawbah. وَلَا تُصَلِّ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ مِّنْهُمْ مَاتَ أَبَدًا وَلَا تَقُمْ عَلَىٰ قَبْرِهِ إِنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Meaning, O Rasulullah, do not pray for them and do not visit them because they died in a state of kufr. So which means the aqidah, if person have aqidah, even without this, he was lazy, he was uh, ignorant, he was far away from the religion of Allah, inshallah after punishment, he will be saved. So that's why try to save your family, your friends, your neighbors, if just with the aqidah and Islam, the most important things. All Islam is important, but you see the difference and the importance of having what? A right faith. A right what? Faith. Someone will ask, if the person, if the person is a, have no faith, but he do a lot of charity, help a lot of people. But he doesn't have, he doesn't believe in the Quran, for example. Or he doesn't believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he helped a lot. 
What do you think about it? He will be forgiven. His help, his uh, charity will help him. No, because faith must be there. But the aqida must be there. Iman billah, malaika, al kutub, al rusul, yom al akhir, al qadr khairihi wa shari, must be there. No doubt in these things. Six uh, things. Uh, Allah says in the Quran. وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ We have revealed to you, Rasulullah. وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ To those also before you, messengers before Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ If you commit shirk, Allah will destroy all your good deeds. Means shirk. Billah will destroy all the good deeds. And that shows the importance of having what? A right faith and a right iman. We say also uh, Uh, the important one of the important of aqidah uh, a person if have faith he will be uh, having shafa as the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi told his uncle just say one kalima one kalima and we have hadith shafa in Sahihain uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will Allah will say group by group take out from the Jannah from hell this group this group that until the end, the one who didn't do any good deeds, no good deeds at all, after being punished, will be taken out from the, the hell. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us al-firdaus. Al al-firdaus. So that is the important of the, one of the important also of having uh, aqidah, To be saved also from Allah's punishment. Uh, Hadith Mu'ad. Mu'ad is a Sahabi of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What does it mean Sahabi? Friends? Sahabi. Term Sahabi. Please remind me if any terms you don't understand, let me know. Huh? A Sahabi is the one who meets or met the Prophet وسلم, believing in him or believing in whatever he comes with. We say Sahabi is a plural of Sahaba, right? Sahaba is plural of Sahabi, one person. Meaning the one who met with the Prophet Sallallahu believe in the Sallallahu and he died in the state of Islam. Right? Very important term. Tabi'i is the one who met a Sahabi. So we have Sahabi. When we say Sahabi, means companions of uh, uh, of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi So Mu'ad radiallahu anhu, he was Sahabi and he learned from Nabi Sallallahu and he was uh, scholars, scholar among the Sahaba, and he was sent to Yemen to do da'wah. Hmm? Uh, Nabi Sallallahu asked him while he was with him, what is the right upon us, servant of Allah towards Allah, and Allah's uh, right uh, towards his creations. So Mu'az say, Allah wa Rasuluhu a'lam. Allah and his messenger knows only. Then the Nabi told him, Haqqul ibadi ala Allah, the right of Allah uh, 
upon us is to worship him alone meaning we shouldn't worship anyone besides Allah and Allah uh, our right towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is if we do that he will not punish us very beautiful statement then Mu'ad he say afala ubashiru nas he asking uh, Nabi Sallallahu can I give this good news, share this good news with others? And Nabi Sallallahu say, don't do it. If you say that people will leave the good deeds, they will not act. They will just, you know, believe it's sufficient. I can do whatever I want. Then Mu'ad radiallahu anhu turned this hadith just before he passed away. Because it is prohibited and major sin to hide. Allah's book and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sunnah is if you are knowledgeable you should not hide the knowledge you were given by Allah so Mu'ad he just told us because Allah says in the Quran إن الذين يكتمون ما أنزلنا من البينات والهدى من بعد ما بيناه للناس في الكتاب أولئك يلعنهم الله ويلعنهم اللاعن those who hide what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala revealed they will be cursed by Allah and the messengers. That's why Mu'ad, he told that just because he's scared of the, the verse. And it's very beautiful, sorry, very beautiful statement. To worship Allah, do not commit shirk, do not worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anyone. Insha'Allah, you are safe. You are what? Safe. Uh, I don't know, uh, some suggest that this class has to be for one hour, two hours, uh, one hour and a half is long. What do you think? For me, I don't mind one hour and a half. Are you okay with one hour and a half? Or you prefer one hour and we just have to? One and a half. Hmm? Sorry. So I think okay, one hour sometimes stay focused. One hour you can focus more. It's good as <laughs> quality over quantity. Uh. One hour inclusive of questions and answer or one hour after question and answer? Yes, In including uh, you, we can, it's a good idea also. We can have one hour, we talk, then we open question and answer. One hour for talk, Q&A later. It's good. Thank you. Middle. So we have it for one hour and we open Q&S. Huh? Okay. Yes. Uh, that's what we have uh, uh, discussed today. The, the term of Islam in linguistic and also Sharia the terms of Aqeedah in both and uh, the term of uh, Tawheed in general. We will go in deep inshallah later on and we discuss the, the importance of having uh, Aqeedah, a right Aqeedah and to have a right faith. Inshallah, we will discuss next class inshallah the, the pillars of Islam, the pillars of Islam. Since the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa when a, a Bedouin, a person from out from the city, he came to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi and he said, Oh Rasulullah, tell me about something. If I do, I will be granted Jannah. So and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, He told him about the arcane of Islam, Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, wa tuqeem as salah, wa tuqti as zakah, wa tasuma Ramadan. Huh? Then after that, the man said, Wallahi. I swear that I will not do anything additional. So the Nabi Sallallahu when he left, he said if he is honest, he will go to Jannah. So it shows the importance of knowing the, the pillars of Islam and understanding them. Please, if you have a question.
Yes, please. Yeah, this is a, a good question. What was the difference between difference between aqidah and uh, tawheed? We say some some scholars they don't differentiate, and uh, some they differentiate. It's just like Islam and iman. So when you mention Islam, iman is there. You know, when you mention Islam, only it means Islam and iman, the five pillars of Islam and the six pillars of iman. If you mention Iman, the Islam is the, but if you mention both, so Islam refer to the five pillars, right? And which is, uh, which are Shahada, La ilaha illallah, Anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah, Iqam al-Salah, uh, performing Salah, giving charity, fasting Ramadan, performing Hajj, Islam. And Iman, it refers to Iman, faith in Allah, angels, uh, books, messengers, Yawm al-Akhir, and Qadr. Right? Aqidah and Tawheed. If you mention Aqidah, Tawheed is there. Mention Tawheed, Aqidah is there. If you mention both, Aqidah refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to three things. Tawheed, some scholar name it Tawheed Rububiyya, Tawheed Uluhiyya, Tawheed Asma wa Sifat. Uh, and some they mention Tawheed al Qasd wa Talab and Tawheed al Ma'rifa wa Ithbat, like Ibn al Qayyim, Rahimallah. So Tawheed al Rububiyya, it means your belief towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Malik, Al-Sayyid, Al-Qayyum, Al-Hay uh, His names and Tawheed Al-Ubudiyya it refers to Ibadah, to worship you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone to slot for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do tawaf only uh, in Kaaba uh. all types of Ibadah has to be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Tawheed al-Asma wa al-Sifat the, the names and characteristics of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to believe it as it is in the Quran and the Sunnah and the how they understand it the, the companions of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam right and if they mention Aqeedah Aqeedah it refers to the Iman as we mentioned Billah Malaika Al-Kutub Al-Rusul Al-Yawm Al-Akhir We'll discuss this, inshallah, in detail. Is this your answer for a question? Please, next. Yes, uh, asking for forgiveness to Allah. Uh, a number of sins. Let's say one sin uh, that you do, then you pay you ask for forgiveness, you're supposed to not do that sin. But if you repeat that sin again, and then you ask for forgiveness again. Let's say uh, somebody who, who drinks alcohol, mm. right? Mm. Then after a while, he, okay, he has sees the light, he asks for forgiveness. Mm. Then somewhere around 10, 10 months, he gets back his drinking habit. And then he asks for, for forgiveness again. So how long does Allah give him the right to forgive this guy? That's a good question. Uh, since we differentiate between uh, Maasiya and Shirk, so the person, as long as he believes that he's wrong, right, so he's Muslim. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, لا تنقطع التوبة حتى تطلع الشمس من مغربها the door of repentance will not close until the sun sets from the west. Right? And before a person, the ruh, reach to the uh, turquwa, to the throat. So these two conditions, a person can have no tawbah after this. But before this, the door and the gate of tawbah is open. Of course, as a Muslim, if he promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has to abstain because we know the condition of Tawbah are three. Conditions of Tawbah are how many? Three. The first 
two, two regrets. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in hadith, Anadamu tawba. Regretting is repentance. Two regrets. So I did, I drink. Oh, astaghfirullah, you may cry, you may, ah. Uh. That's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah will not punish. I cry due to the, the fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Hmm? Uh, a second one to to promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not do it again so you say this one oh Allah I will not do it right uh, a third one is al-iqla uh, to decide that I will not do it And the last one, if it is between you and a human being. Because there are some sins between us and Allah. Like now, example, kuhul, drinking kuhul, is between us and Allah. Right? But if, if uh, I say something bad to someone, I took his money. I took money of someone. Corruption. So here, plus this, I will try my best to find this person to give him back his rights uh, to give him what? his money if I can't find this person then I have this amount of money I give it as charity uh, the niyyah of that person if most some question nowadays if I tell to that person I have taken your right without knowing or I have taken your money without knowing so this your money. If you think he will get angry or sad, or I will send it to him to someone without telling him. If there is a misunderstanding, may may what may uh, cut the relationship like relative, family, or, or so. I send to somebody this money of some that one give it to him. So these are the uh, conditions of Tawbah and it's open. And the person is still Muslim as long as his aqidah there, as we explain. Is your answer of the question? Yeah, since you bring up the forgiveness for sin that we do someone wrong, mm. or we owe them money. If, what happens is when the person is young, he doesn't have much money, so he borrows from his friend or Whoever, but by the time that he has the money, the person that he owes died. Mm. How, who shall he give his money to? Inheritance. Inheritance huh? Yeah. Meaning his wife uh, alive, or the husband, or the children. Those, because this money is uh, now the right of the children. It's no more for the person. Uh, inheritance is the, the haq and the right of the, the family who inherit from the person who died. If we don't know him, then we give as charity. Yes, please. This is your answer. Okay. If you don't know the person, then this money we give it as a, a charity. A charity. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no problem. Please, other ask. You know, Ibn Abbas, just to motivate you, Ibn Abbas, you know, he's Hebrew. And we say Hebr is the only title we're giving to Ibn Abbas, the one who has a lot of knowledge, deep knowledge. They were, he was asked, how did you achieve to that level? He said two things. Lisanun aqul wa qalbun sa'ul. Meaning, Lisanun sa'ul, I ask a lot. Ibn Abbas, he said, I ask a lot. The second is qalbun aqul means I ask meaning the, the question that reasonable questions to not create fitna, to not show off to uh. So meaning we need to ask to, uh, to learn and to make also the teacher to learn and to do research more. Please, yes. Okay. Uh, this is a life situation whereby it happens to us daily. Let's say we work in a corporate or we, we are with friends. And we are Muslim, but we notice some of our friends don't go for Friday prayers, or some of them too lazy to go. And we as Muslims we say that we we have to advise him and ask him to follow us. 
how many times must you ask? Because we have this thing called the sabarana. You know? As humans, sometimes you get fed up. Is it wrong to get fed up? After you ask him so many times. Very good question. Tasabaran, huh? <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, we should know that our job is just to convey the message. The Hidayah is not belong to you. The Hidayah divide into two. Hidayah Irshad and Hidayah uh, Tawfiq. Hidayat Irshad means just guidance. And the second one is to, to make sure he can, he can follow. This one even the Prophet doesn't have. So Allah says to his messenger, you do not guide the one you loved because he loved his uncle but he couldn't help him right but he did Arshad Tawfiq Bayan to show to convey this everyone have it Allah says to his messenger oh Rasulullah you guide people to the straight path and that's why Nuh alayhi salam he spent with his people 950 years. Some way it said only 80 people follow him. 80 people. Right? Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا He spent 950 years, only 80. So sometimes we say to someone just one or twice, then we give up. We shouldn't give up. Allah says to us and Messenger, "In alayka illa al-balagh." Your job is just to convey. So meaning, we shouldn't give up. But we have to use different ways. Not every time, the same way. Go to Juma. You are not a Muslim. Uh, we should use. Sometimes maybe we send a hadith, evidences, ayat. He's a friend. We try to find the a right way to. To persuade him, as Allah says in the Quran, "وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضَّنْ غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَمْ فَضُّوا مَنْ حَوْلِكَ." If you are hard, rude, people will not listen to you. People will run away from you. So, meaning, we shouldn't give up. We shouldn't give up. It doesn't mean if he doesn't, it didn't go. It's uh, you, 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 you. Uh, I mean, uh, you feel you have done your job. Allah will reward you. Allah has recalled everything. Please, any more questions? Jazakum Allah khair, barakallahu feekum. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ilaha illa anta, khairu kutubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.